Hey guys, it's KB5MIQ Big Boy, the Lamb Radio Cat up here. Guys, we're going to talk about something now. We're going to talk a little bit more about my RF open spot 4 here. Shark RF open spot 4 here in a little bit. Guys, been thinking about lots of things here about how to get people into the hobby, but more important, how to keep them in it. I got thinking back this week about the video I did a while back about showing how many tech license losses we had had in the last several years. Uh, we've got to stop that. We've got to be helping radio operators a better job about getting people interested in this hobby and keeping them in this hobby. One of the, like I've said before, one of the biggest mistakes I think a lot of guys did when, the, when they changed the license years ago is they got them a talkie and that's all as far as they went as far as using local repeaters. And they got bored with it or they made a mistake on the repeater and some old guy instead of explaining it nicely chewed their butt out on the repeater things like that guys we got to be better custodians of this hobby we can't treat new people like that um, things is different now to give you a good example when i got into this hobby in 91 we didn't have internet we didn't have cell phones we were still on analog TV, unless you lived in the city. I didn't. Uh, 3, 6, and 12 is all we got TV-wise. Uh, your entertainment was hunting, fishing, unless you was into tech a little bit. But you didn't have internet, didn't have cell phones, things like that. Didn't have direct TV or anything. Uh, I even experimented before I got my ham ticket on improving my TV reception. I had put a 50 foot pole up with a 200 mile range Radio Shack VHF UHF antenna booster and a rotor. I'm as a crow flies 120 miles from Dallas, 150. At night I could watch every station in Dallas on broadcast station. Just being interested in tech and that's what we had to deal with. If um, you know, I've told y'all before, I've had sad hams trash me on the air. I didn't, didn't bother me none. Did none of them talk to me the way I got talked to in boot camp when I was in the old OD green uniform, polished black boot wearing army, and a bunch of old combat vet drill sergeants chewing me out. I am a sad ham, didn't bother me. I just tuned away from it. It ain't like that now. People got too many options for entertainment and things they can do. And the world has changed, you know. People got a little thinner skin on certain things. People get embarrassed a little more easily if somebody makes a radical correction to them. So we've got to treat people better, get them into this hobby. Tech is one of the ways I think we're gonna keep people in this hobby and get them interested in it. Now, a lot of your older hams hate these new digital modes like FT8, and Echo Link, and and now I'm using this DMR and Fusion. They just say it's awful. Well, it's an approved mode. FCC approved it. AWRL didn't approve it. FCC approved it. And it's, if it keeps people in this hobby or gets them into this hobby, I'm all for it. I've done FT8. I've learned I kind of like it. I'm not. It doesn't replace uh, phone for me, but. If I'm in here working on something, I still do it. Um, I got in the law book of the world. I like to work POTA stations. Uh, I'm not registered POTA because after I signed up for Echo Link and Law Book of the World, I didn't feel like jumping through any more hoops. But that's what it's going to take to keep people in this hobby. Hopefully, we can get them in 
the 100 watts of the wire and, and, and putting the antennas up and getting on the low bands on HF radio. People's budgets are different. People have different ways of spending money. Uh, depending on their location, where they live at, what they, it limits what they can and can't do. Now, I'm going to show you all something, and I'm going to clip a video on the end of this because I'm going to fire this up. This is my open spot for RF. I talked about this the last uh, hot spot in the last video. I just discovered something else about it. And remember, I'm the computer caveman. All right. This is all still new territory to me. I bought this Yaesu FT70D to use with this, and it works great. I discovered this week that I didn't have to have this. The Open Spot 4 Pro that this is will work off the app. All right. It'll work right off the app. Well, let me see why we got one video going here if we can actually make this work. Let me pull this up right quick. It's kind of interesting to get this thing to work in this way. It really is. All right, let's see. K1 ENT KB5 MIQ Hey Kent, this big boy, I've got you on video and I'm actually talking to you on my tablet using the Open Spot 4 app on my tablet. Well, so you're not, uh, you're not actually using your FT-70 tablet then, huh? No, no, I'm not using it right now. But I'm just, I'm shooting this video and I wanted to just get on video here how this works. Yeah, it is me too. It kind of reminds me of Echo Link. Uh, they, I've done a little research. Only the Open Spot 4 Pro is the one you can do this with. The earlier ones doesn't work like that. Yeah, I've got the app on my phone and my tablet. I use the app to change the rooms out that I get into, and I and I was watching a video on it and figured out I could do this. I had saw this function when I first fired it up, but I never could make it work until I got to messing with it a little bit. Okay, Ken, I appreciate it. I'm going to finish this video up here, and uh, I'll catch you later, buddy. Y'all have a good evening. KB5 MIQ, 7-3. Okay, that's how easy that is. Now, I'll admit, you look a lot cooler using the Yaesu Talkie on there but guys if you're on a budget and you're wanting to try that out the go to the shark rf website mcc doesn't care my only place i found them is on the shark rf website they come out of europe for about 260 something dollars a piece uh but 
that's all you'd have to have that either Wi-Fi or cell phone hotspot and it'll cross band it'll do all the different digital modes so something good to think about yes you see guys setting up Poda boxes and go boxes and things like that to work poda and work in the field with that's great that's absolutely great don't let yourself fall into the trap of saying i'm only going to set this up for emergency use if i have to have it in an emergency uh ham radio yes was set up to have a trained pool of emergency operators for using emergency with their own gear the byproduct of that is you getting to use it as a hobby helps you hone your skills, get your gear ready, and get real familiar with your gear to where you'll be able to assist in an emergency. The odds of you being average operator being used in an emergency right now is very slim. I've been here since 91. I've done it one time. And I'm not counting Skywarn in that because everybody's going a lot of guys do skywarn all the time i'm talking a bona fide emergency when the grid's down and communications are down and that's what i was working with that one time so if you buy this stuff get a license and put it in a go box and forget about it you're doing yourself a disservice get on it have some fun with it learn the different modes don't pay attention to naysayers and say anything about that ain't real radio I will say this, FT8, Echolink, and his DMR, digital stuff, in a true emergency, grid down, sell down emergency, that stuff's not going to work. It falls back to wire antennas and actual radio RF to, to get the messages through. Something to think about. Guys, remember Main Training Company in Paris, Texas? They're getting real close to moving into their new location. I'm anxious to see that. Um, thanks to everybody who subscribed to the channel. We're at 1,527. We're going to do a giveaway here about 1,700. It's KB5 MIQ Big Boy, the old ham radio cat in my lap. 73. I'm on a little, little quick correction. You know me, I don't use the script with all this stuff. At the end there, when I talk about modes that won't work in an actual emergency, I said FT8. What I should have said there is FT8 is not recognized by ARRL like on field day for using emergency because it's just strict contact only messages. It'll work because it's a broad, it's a, something that's broadcast through RF, but it's not used in emergency. Let me clarify what I was saying. Echo link. DMR, digital, fusion, that's the stuff that if the grid goes down, the cell goes down, that stuff's just not going to work. You can still pass in emergency messages using it, but if the internet and cell phones are gone, those modes are not going to work. If, well, I should have said FTH is just not recognized for use as an emergency mode. Yeah, if you got any questions, just shoot me an email or a comment here. Thanks, everybody. Same three.